Paul wore a diving suit and dived into the sea with a flashlight. He saw a symbol that looked like an eye. As Paul went deeper through the eye hole, he found walls all around him. When he reached out to touch them, the gray stones miraculously turned into gold. Suddenly, a mermaid appeared in front of him, but it showed its fangs. Paul woke up instantly from the nightmare. His girlfriend Barbara came forward to comfort him and asked if he had the same nightmare again. It turned out that Paul had had the same dream more than once, but he didn't know why. He was a workaholic, and as soon as he woke up he opened his computer to check the stock market. Barbara just wanted to have some fun, so she grabbed the computer and threw it into the sea. Howard and Vicky were sunbathing on the deck, and they resolved the conflict between the couple quickly. At this moment, they heard a strange singing coming from a nearby seaside town, probably during a religious ceremony. Vicky went to the cabin for skin care, while Howard saw cumulonimbus clouds in the sky, indicating a storm was approaching. He quickly started the boat to avoid hitting the reefs. A strong wind blew, causing the red wine on the deck to flow like blood, and suddenly the boat hit a reef. Vicky's leg was stuck between the rock and the damaged hull, unable to be freed. Paul wanted to call for help using the radio, but it was broken. He could only fire a signal flare in the direction of the town, but no one came to help. Using binoculars to search for people in the town, they found that no one was in the harbor. They could only take the lifeboat to ask for help in the town. Howard stayed behind to take care of his wife, while Barbara and Paul went to find assistance. However, the danger was beneath the boat. Vicky's injured leg started bleeding, and the blood mixed with a lump of black mud. Vicky sensed something in the water, and her husband shone a flashlight down but saw nothing unusual. Hearing his wife's screams of pain, he quickly fired a gunshot. As Paul and Barbara were on their way with the lifeboat, it was punctured, and seawater seeped in through the hole. Barbara panicked and blocked the leak. She heard a gunshot from behind and wanted to turn back to check. However, the boat was leaking heavily, and turning back would cause them to sink halfway. It was better to go ashore and seek rescue. The two of them rowed to the town with oars, and finally arrived at the harbor when the storm fell. There was no one nearby, so they ventured into the alleyways. Everywhere was filled with an eerie atmosphere, and some doors and windows were nailed shut. Barbara found the church in the town based on the singing. Paul was frightened by the symbols on the church's roof, as they were the same as in his dream. Barbara knocked on the door, and the singing abruptly ceased. The door was unlocked and opened easily. Inside, they found no one, and the prayer chairs were empty. Just as they were puzzled, a priest who knew little English came out from the side. After learning about their situation, he quickly took them to the ferry terminal to assess the situation and arranged for two sailors to help. One person needed to stay behind to call the police. So Paul asked his girlfriend to stay while he followed the sailors back to the yacht. After the fishing boat left, Barbara took out her phone but found there was no signal. The priest said there was a phone at a nearby hotel. Barbara noticed the webbed fingers between the priest's pointing fingers, but still went to the town to find the hotel first. On the way, she met some people who behaved strangely. Thankfully, the hotel was right in front of her, and she rushed in and told the receptionist her request. Waiter did not move when she heard her words and tied Barbara with the priest. At this time, Paul had just arrived at the yacht and found that Howard and Vicky were nowhere to be found. Vicky's blood-stained bathrobe was thrown into the water. He returned to the town and was greeted by the priest at the harbor. The priest lied to Paul and said that his girlfriend went outside to find the police. Paul believed it and followed the instructions to find a hotel. Paul had difficulty communicating, but he saw his girlfriend's lighter on the counter. He could only rest in a room, and the waiter turned around to get the key, revealing a wound on her neck that resembled fish gills. Paul was frightened and ran quickly to his room. While climbing the stairs, he heard the howl of an amphibian. Unexpectedly, the room was in bad condition. There was no electricity or heating, and the bed and sofa were moldy. Only the bathroom light was still on, but it was even dirtier inside. Paul sat on the sofa exhausted, and while he was dazed, a woman wearing the same clothes as his girlfriend appeared. When the other person turned her face, Paul suddenly woke up, and he heard noisy discussions downstairs. Looking out of the window, he saw the villagers gathered in front of the hotel, and their behavior was strange. They pointed their fingers at Paul, and he wanted to lock the door for safety, but found that the latch was missing. He could only remove the latch from the toilet door and put it on. As the townspeople searched room by room, Paul was ready to escape by jumping out of the window. But unfortunately, the room was three floors above the ground. He could only break into the adjacent bathroom and use the wardrobe to block one door while he blocked the other. 
Unable to hold them off any longer, he had to jump out of the window. After a cushioned fall, he only sprained one foot. Paul was planning to leave quietly, but a car approached from outside, followed by a large group of townspeople walking towards him. He had to find a place to hide. There were pigskins hanging everywhere, which could hide his figure. When a bolt of lightning flashed, Paul was horrified to find a bunch of dried human skins. His Howard was behind him, already peeled into a bloody skin. Paul screamed in horror, attracting the searching townspeople. He picked up an oil drum and ignited it with a lighter. The townspeople were in a panic, trying to save their belongings and couldn't catch up to Paul. He took advantage of the chaos and blended into the crowd to leave. Unexpectedly, he encountered a drunkard at the corner. He thought the drunkard was a monster like everyone else, so he took out a knife and threatened his life. Just as he was about to crouch down, he saw a person with both knees unable to walk passing by in front of them. The drunkard claimed to be a good person and not like the others. So Paul learned about the town's past from the drunkard. The people used to fish for a living and believed in Christ. The drunkard was from a poor fisherman's family and lived a difficult life. A captain said he had found a god who not only brought fish, but also brought gold. Late at night, the captain conducted a summoning ritual at the Devil's Reef, throwing strange metal into the sea and calling upon the sea god. The next day, the islanders returned with a full load and even found gold in the sea. They no longer believed in Christ, smashed the statue of God and the Virgin Mary, and killed the elderly priest, created the Dagon sect, but Dagon gradually became greedy. He demanded human sacrifices and wanted to reproduce with humans. The alcoholic avoids assimilation by pretending to be crazy. Even after Paul finished speaking, he still didn't believe. Paul believed the drunkard was truly insane, but he urgently needed to leave the island. He wants the other party to help provide a car. Xavier was the only one on the island with a car, so they quickly went to his house nearby. Xavier was dressed in all black and wrapped himself tightly. He was escorted home by others. Paul didn't quite understand. So the drunkard explained to him, the villagers can only live in the sea by transforming into fish, like monsters. Xavier could already go into the sea, but he chose to stay on land and take on the responsibilities of his ancestors. The drunkard helped distract the guards, and Paul snuck into the car. Unfortunately, he didn't have the car keys, and the noise he made attracted the attention of the guards. Paul ran into a villa, only to find himself in a girl's room. She was the mermaid from his dreams, and her name was Auzia. She said she had been waiting for Paul and even helped to divert Xavier's inquiries. Both of them had a good impression of each other. But just as Paul was becoming emotional, he accidentally touched Ausia's abdomen, which was covered in gills. Paul panicked and lifted the bedsheet, only to see two octopus tentacles wriggling below. Terrified, Paul quickly fled the villa. He fought with the guards at the entrance and managed to get the keys. Paul easily started the car with the keys, but other people heard the noise and rushed over. Even though Paul tried to escape by driving, he was caught up. He abandoned the car and took refuge in a nearby resident's house. The floor of the house was covered in water, and a frog jumped onto his leg and croaked. A little boy discovered Paul and called for his father. His father's limbs had already softened, and he stuck his head out of the water. He hit Paul with an octopus tentacle but was knocked unconscious by Paul with a toilet lid. More strange individuals discovered him, but as he tried to escape, he was caught in a fishing net. The villagers imprisoned him with Barbara. The drunkard and Vicky were also captured. Vicky had her legs severed but didn't bleed excessively and die. She sat in a corner, crying and recounting her tragic experience. She was taken to the bottom of the sea as a sacrifice to Dagon, who wanted her to reproduce. The girlfriend comforted her mother, believing it was all an illusion. But seeing her mother's exhausted appearance, she started to feel scared. At this moment, the priest and the butcher arrived. As they opened the cage, Paul suddenly rushed out unexpectedly. The other three joined the fight, but there were too many enemies, and they were captured again. After the priest caught Vicky, she took a knife and stabbed herself in the stomach, dying on the night the storm arrived. The girlfriend was taken away separately, while Paul and the drunkard were taken to the slaughterhouse. Both of them refused to compromise or give in. They continuously recited prayers, declaring their loyalty and faith in God. The drunkard was no longer insane. He died like a true man. As it approached Paul's turn, Uxia suddenly appeared. It turns out she is the high priestess who wants to keep Paul to reproduce together. Paul asked her 
to rescue his girlfriend but was refused because his Dagon wants to have children with Barbara. Tears unconsciously streamed down Paul's eyes. After his shackles were removed, Paul wielded two knives. Come on, motherfucker. I'm not a... <laughs> killing one monster after another. Following the sound of a song, he arrived at the underground tunnel of the ritual. He struggled forward, holding his girlfriend's lighter. At this moment, Uxia, dressed in priestess attire, was drawing symbols on his girlfriend's body. His girlfriend's body was suspended in the air by iron chains. Then Uxia threw a metal summoning into the water. The water churned and boiled, just as the iron chains were about to be released, intending to submerge his girlfriend in the water. Paul arrived with a canister of oil, and the raging flames engulfed the evidence present. He quickly pulled his girlfriend out of the water. However, she had a vacant expression and begged Paul to kill her. At this moment, a colossal creature emerged from the water, sweeping away his girlfriend, leaving only her severed arms hanging from the chains. It was the rumored Dagon. Paul was beaten mercilessly and almost met his end under the wrath of Xavier. Xavier had once dreamt of Paul as he was Paul's father. In the past, Xavier used to buy and sell women and engage in relationships with them. A woman gave birth to Paul and left with the child. Oxia and Xavier were half-siblings sharing the same father. They were both children of Dagon. Paul couldn't accept the reality as he stared at Xavier's horrifying brain. Paul poured gasoline over himself and set his own body ablaze. In the critical moment, Oxia threw herself at him, and they both plunged into the sea. In the depths of the ocean, Paul was unrecognizable. But he didn't feel any difficulty breathing or pain. Gills, just like Oxia's, grew on his abdomen. He watched the beautiful half-fish people swimming around him. Paul finally accepted his fate and happily followed Oxia as they swam towards the depths of the sea, entering the nest of the deep ones that resembled eyes. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.